You guys know good and well that I make an awful lot of drone and quadcopter related videos, so when I saw this deal on Black Friday, I I couldn't say no. Yeah, I bought the DJI Phantom 3, and I bought the Standard Edition. So I wanted to do the unboxing on camera, but being in a bit of a weird layout and a weird setup, it's not gonna work out particularly well. And there's a ton of unboxings out there, so it's really not that important that I do the entire in-depth unboxing. But I thought I would just sort of go through and assemble it, tell you my thoughts as I do it, and then we'll take it out and do a flight. All right, so very first up, read and understand the user manual and all other safety instructions before you use this equipment. That is a big, absolute, definite must. Cannot tell you how many people will buy these things immediately to discard all of this and take them out and start flying. I've flown tons and tons of quadcopters at this point, and I'm still planning on reading through this thoroughly before I take it out because this is a massive step in a different direction. But inside of this little packet, you have loads and loads of different colored stickers to match your little heart's desire. Pink ones if my wife wanted to fly them. Blue ones is probably what I'll end up using. Magenta ones and Ooh, some cobalt blue ones, I like that. And the red ones, the traditional red that everyone seems to use. I will probably actually go with these, or maybe the light blue ones, I don't know. You have a quick start guide, which I will of course read through. You have an in the box list of all the things you can expect to find. Safety guidelines and disclaimer. Again, you probably ought to read through that. There's not a full thorough manual, which I kind of expected. Oh well. You have some cardboard. You have the main drone itself, which I'm not gonna pull out at the moment. Here is your controller with built-in clamp accessory. Boy, that's an awkward one. Again, this is my first time with a Phantom 3 or any sort of DJI drone, so I'm not really familiar with how this thing works, but I'll look into that. But looking around on it, you do have power and you have your sticks. The sticks actually spring back to the middle. That's that's new for me. You have a couple of switches. You've got your little thing here to move the camera up and down. Love that. And it looks like nothing else is really going to be coming out of this box. Oh, here's one more little box in here that I can get to without taking the quad out. And this would appear to be the charger and the USB cable. The charger does come in two pieces. It just plugs in like this. It says output 17.4 volts at 3.3 amps. If I remember correctly, there is a higher output charger, but it does not come with the standard, so that's okay. And this little piece here flips open so you can plug the charger into it. The USB cable that was included is a micro USB cable. I'm gonna try to work around the drone for now. We have the accessories box here. Accessories box comes with, looks like some extra dampeners for the gimbal, as well as a propeller removal clamp. Some foam, I would assume the foam is for anti-vibration, but I don't see it mentioned on here. Uh, Anti-drop kit, that's interesting. Yeah, not really sure. Gonna have to read through it again. And then there's another little bag over here. It says DJI on it. Very nice branding on that. And I would assume, and probably rightly assume, this is jam-packed full of props. Yep, there you go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight props. And they are color-coded black and silver, so you know which way they're gonna go on. And last, but definitely not least, is the quadcopter, the drone itself. I'm gonna put the box out of the way. There you go. This is kind of like a kid on Christmas morning, for me at least, but I have to say the buildup has been so much that it's it's almost a letdown for me. It feels a whole lot more sturdy than the SEMA X8C that I've flown in the past. It is definitely a lot heavier. Interestingly enough, the gimbal on the, the camera here is actually moving around. I, I kind of expected that it would be sort of locked in place, which I think it's supposed to be. There's a a little plastic piece here that's supposed to be holding it down. And it's interesting to get to see the whole gimbal mechanism up close. I'll see if I can get a shot of that for you, because you can kind of see how, how all the, oh, anti-drop pins go inside of the gimbal. That's interesting, because the gimbal itself actually flexes up entirely without it. That's very, very neat. It does have emblazoned here on the front, Phantom Standard. On all the prop areas, it says, please match the nut color with the motor axis color. To someone who flies quadcopters, that is obvious, but to someone who doesn't, I would see that it's not. But yeah, on one you have black, on one you have silver or gray. Then on the back, it says to turn on, press once, then press and hold for two seconds. I've heard this said before, but I just want to make sure that I'm following the directions myself. The legs feel a little bit a little bit flimsy, although not too bad. And I never quite realized that there was an antenna that sticks down in the leg. Again, good stuff to know, good stuff to learn about with all this. Because the first one I've seen that actually has an external antenna was the HMX280 from High Sky. So this one has an external antenna as well. But I think at this point, it is probably time to maybe do a little bit of product photography, get the props installed, read through the manual before I even think about turning it on, get it all charged up, and then we can take it outside and fly it. So let's do that. Now, unfortunately, I had to throw away every bit of audio from my first flight outdoors with it because of the wind. However, here's a bit of a quick play-by-play. -play. Once I was out there, I had to first connect to the drone via Wi-Fi, had to go through a registration process with DJI. That was kind of expected, and I probably should have done that before going outside. Then it made me go through a safety tutorial. I had to calibrate the compass inside the device by spinning it around one way and then the other way. And was I ready to take off at that point? No. 
a firmware update was available and required, and then the IMU sensor had to be calibrated, so that required 45 minutes of downtime. Once I was again outside, I was able to hit that takeoff button, swipe my finger across the screen to confirm, and then it took off to an automatic height of 3.9 feet, where it allowed me to take control. I flew around for about six and a half minutes, and here's some of the highlights from that. One thing I noticed while I was doing this is I was going back and forth looking at the screen and then back up at the quadcopter, just back and forth. And after I'd been flying around for a little while smoothly, getting some nice footage, some nice shots, I got to be a little bit more adventurous with it as you saw at some of the ending clips there. Flying around closer to the swing set and doing faster aerial maneuvers. Nothing fancy, nothing sporty, but it was a lot faster than I expected it to be. And when it was all said and done, when I was ready to stop, I hit the land button inside of the app and it landed completely hands-free and shut itself down. Could have done it manually, I chose not to because it was my first time. And like I said, my total time in the air was only about six and a half minutes. And when I was done, it said that I had, I can't remember, it was either 70 or 75% battery remaining. So for my first time out there, I was really, really impressed with it. I was, I'll admit, I was a little bit frightened with it. It's just one of the larger quadcopters that I've flown and by far the most expensive one that I've flown, even though it is not the ultra high-end professional model. $500 is still an awful lot of investment, but that definitely has gotten me just thirsty for more. Looking for places that I can take this and fly it around safely, keeping it away from people where there are nice sights to be seen. I live in central Kentucky, so maybe I can take some time and try to get it near the state capitol. Maybe take it down to one of the horse parks or take it to one of the bourbon distilleries. There's just all sorts of places here around Kentucky where it would be beautiful to get footage. And of course, I'm looking forward to one of those wonderful fall slash winter sunsets. So be on the lookout for more footage from this device. I am definitely looking forward to making more of it. If I don't post it here, I'll probably be posting it in amongst my daily vlogs over on my second channel, Twill Plays, where I do daily videos with my family. If you're interested in seeing any of those, of course, there is a link down in the video description. So far, I'm very, very impressed with the DJI Phantom 3 standard. There are a few things that it's lacking compared to the advanced and professional models, notably the 1080p. 60 video recording as well as 4k video recording but realistically 1080p is okay it's a whole lot better than any other quadcopter that i've flown and the fact that it can do 2k footage even though again it is only 30 frames per second gives you a little bit more wiggle room i guess in terms of framing and everything and the things i'm missing with the standard edition like the ability to go much much farther away and the vision sensors so that it can fly indoors or fly when the gps is not so great i'm not really missing those things as far as i'm concerned I don't really plan on getting it terribly far away from myself. A thousand meters is definitely far enough for me, and I'm definitely not flying that thing indoors. Now, unfortunately, the $4.99 deal that I got on Adorama is done. However, I think it is still available for $6.99, maybe even $5.99 for the holiday season. So I'll put a link to where you can find it over on Amazon down in the video description if you're interested in checking it out. But as always, thank you guys so much for watching. Remember to hit the thumbs up button below this video if you like this video. Subscribe to receive more videos when they become available, and we'll see you again next time.